Salam and greetings. Welcome back to Studio Rags. This is your online Shibori class and I am going to walk you through the whole process and with all the materials that you have already received in your Shibori kit. The first technique we are going to do here is the Nui Shibori. Nui Shibori is a stitching technique of making Shibori. With Nui Shibori you can do a lot of complex patterns and designs but as a beginner's pack here you have a wave pattern. With this simple repeatable wave you can do a lot of uh, variations just like this one that I've done a double wave you could also mirror it. Now thread your needle and measure the pattern. Your thread must be at least 10 cm longer than the shape or the pattern. Make a good knot and start stitching. It's a running stitch up and down up and down 1 cm length and it's very simple. The thread I'm using is actually uh, an upholstery stitching thread which is stronger and thicker. If you have this kind of thread available, uh, it's the best idea to use that thre thread. Otherwise, you can use a four strand regular thread. Uh, but make sure to keep it four strand because otherwise it's going to break while you're pulling the pattern. So stitch and finish the whole thing and after that um, tie a knot of the bo both the uh, string from one side and start pulling um, from one side until you have made it nice and tight. Put the thread from the other side as well and if you want you can snip off the extra thread and your shape is ready for the tying. It's important to uh, either have the upholstery thread or you must have the four strands of the thread to avoid any breakage while you're pulling the uh, pattern. The next technique is the Itajami Shibori. Uh, this is the shape resist technique. The basic principle in this Shibori or in fact in all the Shibori is uh, the folding. Whenever you're folding the fabric it must be like a fan folding or accordion fold. So um, that would increase your possibility of dye getting to all the layers. Uh, this is this is a perfectly square piece and I have uh, folded it into a, like a triangle and then I made another triangle as you see and I'm doing a fan folding and I have folded the um, extra ends inwards. I'm using just a simple uh, school rulers the the wooden school rulers which are which you can find on the um, bookstores or um, other local stores and there are two ways to tie uh, this you can either use these uh, clips just like this or you can even use rubber bands or any cord i would prefer to do it with the rubber bands just to show what's the result so this is ready and now we would move to the second one this is a calico bag and i thought to make it into a shibori so this is the second uh, item that we're doing with the itajimi shibori the same way fan folding when you're doing itajami shibori it's a good idea to measure your shape the size of the shape and the folding of the fabric i i always prefer to keep the fabric one or two cm bigger than the shape itself so it's a good idea to measure the fabric folds when you have the extra fabric on the sides that's going to help you get a very um, uh, dominant and clear pattern so this is the third um, a technique and this piece of the fabric is a rectangle piece. So this, uh, we're going to go with the accordion fold or the fan fold. You can see in the layers that this is a zigzag setting or the folding of the um, fabric. So when you're placing the shape with your hands you have to align it um, over and under of the fabric. Uh, so the shapes are aligned and the resist or the pattern is uh, nice and sharp. Let's move on to Kumush Bori. Now this is a pleat and bind technique. I am making a, a narrow uh, fan folding and uh, then I am going to use the polypropylene raffe uh, or the plastic raffe. You can use any cord that you have available and uh, first of all I would tie one side of the uh, fabric with a rubber band that would help me to keep it in its place and then um, join the two ends together to uh, fold it in equal uh, lengths and then start wrapping it over and under. It's like it's like wind you go twisting and in that way uh, you twist or bind the whole fabric uh, just notice that with every step you keep uh, tightening the thing it's a good idea to take someone else's help uh, so someone can hold one end of the fabric and then you uh, start winding it 
and go over the whole length. If your fabric is a lightweight fabric then you would be able to see very nice fish scale kind of pattern on this. But this is a medium weight cotton so the pattern on this is not going to be very uh, sharp. But anyhow this is how you do the um, tying or the winding of the fabric. Next here is an old shirt that has been stained and I just thought to give it, a, give it another uh, chance. And it's just a simple uh, crush and bind with the uh, rubber bands. All the fabrics are ready now. First of all, uh, we'll soak them in the normal water. If you want to soak them in the hot water, that's uh, even better. So just soak them for like a few minutes and then squeeze and take out the extra um, water. Uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with some of the fabrics, you would have to press and squeeze instead of wringing the fabric. And now the fabric is ready for the dyeing. The next step is to prepare the dye bath. So the dye bath we're going to use is the 60% pre-reduced indigo dye. And we're going to use um, the uh, soda ash and the sodium hydrosulfide which is the uh, reducing agent for this. The best uh, thing to do is to prepare your uh, chemicals first in a small bucket you know, in hot water and then uh, mix it in the big tub or the big bucket. In that way the uh, mixing and the stirring of the thing is going to be easy for you. Otherwise if you have a bigger container then uh, dissolving the chemicals could be a problem. So um, just dissolve the, the chemicals and stir only in one side. Uh, this video is uh, sped up so uh, just remember that you have to stir slowly and only in one direction then let it sit for a few minutes and after that it's ready to be uh, poured into the big bucket of hot water the temperature of the water is generally between 60 to uh, 70 degrees centigrade so mix it slowly and uh, cover it for a few minutes and then uh, you would see when you open you would see a lot of bloom or the flower on the top of the thing and uh, the solution is going to be uh, not really blue but bluish green or yellowish and the flower on the top should be like a copper uh, tone flower so remove all that flower and then put your pieces inside dip them under the dye and keep moving the uh, dye stirring it and after that take it to the hot water rinse it for a few minutes until you see it like it's semi clear and then rinse it with the cold water and after that when you've rinsed it clear then open the fabric and see how is the result and get just a few things to note that you might see that your fabric has come out like a yellowish green or greenish blue kind of a color don't worry about it uh, the as as you put it aside the the fabric is going to oxidize and it would change color from yellow or green to blue and indigo so um, that's the, that's a normal process of the dyeing because this needs to uh, come in contact with the oxygen or the air and then it changes its color from yellow or green to blue and the deep blue so these are all the different uh, patterns that we have done the dye bath can be used over and over again until it has really exhausted fully exhausted so don't throw your shibori uh, dye bath you can use it again I hope you enjoyed today's class uh, it was nice working with you and i hope you learned something so if you found it valuable share it with your friends and family and you can subscribe my channel and help me grow so until the next video take care bye bye